Well, there's another acronym you need to learn in the modern world of web development. Yes, there's already way too many. I know. And that acronym is MPA, which stands for multi-page application. And what's interesting about this is I've heard this term for the first time in the last year, but it's actually a methodology of how we build web applications that's been around basically since the beginning of creating interactive web applications. So why is this coming up now? Well, in the world of web development, we've kind of gone full circle. We've had a big focus on the server, which we'll talk about more in a minute. We went to single page applications and we'll compare and contrast multi-page versus single page, but things like the growth of React and Angular and Vue and Svelte, et cetera. And now we're starting to get back to this real big focus on doing things as much as possible on the server. So let's actually give some context as to what both MPA multi-page applications and SPA single page applications are, and we can compare and contrast, and we'll see which one is the better fit for you. So let's start by thinking about how we built websites in the stone ages before all the front end frameworks like Angular, React, Vue, et cetera. Let's take the idea of something like Ruby on Rails, and this is how this traditionally works. A user logs into their computer, opens a web browser, goes to a given website, and then sends a request to the server. Now the server is going to respond back with assets, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, typically what happens is when that request comes in, the server will take that request, it will go and get any information out of a database, for example, that it needs. So we can throw in a database in here. So this server will make a request to the database. The database will respond back to the server with whatever the server needs. The server will use that to generate the markup HTML. It will send back HTML and then any styling and JavaScript that goes along with it. And that's the way this typically works. Now, what happens if we then go to a new page? Well, the next time we go to another page, if we go to slash about, for example, the same thing happens. We make a full request back to the server. The server goes to a database if it needs to, it then responds back with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And this is basically where the idea of MPA or multi-page application comes from. Now, the reason this term is kind of interesting to me is I never learned this term when I learned about how the web works, like we just explained. That's kind of just how it was, especially 10 plus years ago, that's how everything was built. Maybe even six or seven years ago, that's how most things were built. But we've now gotten into this point of using single page applications, and that's been the de facto way to build websites for the past five, six, seven years, probably. So the difference between a multi-page and a single page application is let's say we have an incoming request that goes to uh, the root page. What happens is the server will not, will typically not hit the database directly. What happens is the server will respond back with HTML, CSS, and a lot of JavaScript. And the a lot part is really important. So it's responding back with a lot of JavaScript, and that is for client-side routing to happen and for you to be able to do everything for your application that you need inside of JavaScript. So you have this big initial load of JavaScript with a single page application, but what that means is anytime the application use, needs more data or makes a subsequent request to the server. So if we put, now we go to the about page like so. So now we're on the home page. We then make a subsequent request to the about page. We're not actually making a request back to the server. We are loading that from the big bundle of JavaScript that we already have in the browser. Now then behind the scenes, what happens is the front end is making API requests back to the back end to then get data that it needs from the database. So you'll have another set of, set of arrows in here for these API requests. So we can do API requests inside of here. So the big difference is multi-page applications will make a full server request, a full page reload on each page that you navigate to. So you start at home, you load everything that you need for home. You go to about, you load everything that you need for about. You go to blog, you load everything you need from the blog. And then the interactions with the database are handled during that transaction. So the request comes in, the server looks at what data do we need for this page, requests that data from the database, and then sends that back to the user. Versus a single page application makes predominantly one kind of page request to the server. The server responds back with everything it needs to be able to navigate pages, to have interactions, et cetera. So it's this big JavaScript bundle. 
And then any additional data that it needs on the front end will make API requests to the back end. It will then talk to the database, et cetera. These are kind of two of the most stereotypical ways to build web applications. And the interesting thing, again, is that MPAs have existed since we've been building web applications. And now we've kind of come full circle to moving away from doing all of this work on the client to now being able to do more of this on the server. Let's talk a little bit about why. We talked about in a single page application, we load a lot of JavaScript. And you've probably recognized this before. What happens is you make that request to the server and that initial page load is probably pretty slow. It also means that any additional data that is needed to be loaded, you have to wait for that data to come back from the server. So you have to request that, get it back from the server, then display it on the screen, meaning you probably have a lot of different loading states on your pages. Now, the flip side of this is the original page load for on any given one page with an MPA is probably going to be faster because you're not loading that extra JavaScript. You're just getting what you need for that page. The downside of that, though, is when you switch pages, you're having to make another full request to the server versus in an SPA, you're just kind of loading API data from the server and the rest of the skeleton of the application you already have in that bundle of JavaScript. So SBAs are going to take a little bit longer to load with the first request, then they will take less time to load on subsequent requests and MPAs are going to be the opposite of that, where you have a faster request or a faster load time on the initial request and then slower requests comparatively to an MPA for subsequent pages that you navigate to. Now let's talk about a little bit more of pros and cons of MPAs versus SBAs. One of the benefits with an MPA is SEO value. And you may hear this when you compare uh, static, statically generated sites or server side rendered sites, et cetera. But SEO value is the, is the ability for something like Google to be able to load your website, grab all the information out of those meta tags that it wants, the title, the description, the categories or the tags, the cover image, et cetera, to grab all of that information so that it can index that associated with a given route for your application. So when a multi-page application page is loaded, all of that data is already configured on the server and added to the HTML that gets sent directly back to the user, or in this case, in the SEO context, back to Google. That means Google doesn't have to do any extra work to be able to load in that data and to be able to index it. The flip side of this is that with a single page application, that metadata in the head isn't necessarily available until the JavaScript has been fully loaded on the front end because you're only loading one JavaScript bundle from the server, regardless of which initial page that you hit, whether you start by going to home or about or blog, you're getting one big JavaScript bundle. So the JavaScript has to run on the client to be able to determine what the appropriate SEO tags are. And there's kind of mixed reviews of how good Google is at waiting for that JavaScript to be finished so that it can properly index stuff and get you the best SEO value for your site. Now, one common maybe misconception, or maybe it's true, uh, thought or limitation with MPAs, multi-page applications, is the limited ability to have interactions. So one of the things that's really beneficial with a single page application, and you've probably seen this, is when you submit a form, you can do that all within client-side JavaScript. So you make an API request to the back end to save the information, delete information, whatever it is that you're doing, and then your front end kind of stays there with some sort of loading state. That way it has really good feedback for the user of what's going on, and you can show them when that data has been appropriately saved, deleted, et cetera, or when an error has been thrown. And you're not having to make a full request to reload the entire page. Now with MPAs, with multi-page applications, traditionally when you have a form, you're going to then submit that for a full page refresh. So you'll send all the data over to some sort of endpoint in your application. It will save that data, delete that data, whatever it's meant to be, and then it will reload an entire version of that page meaning you have a little bit of time that goes into reloading that page versus in an SPA, a single page app, you're not completely reloading the page, you're just kind of reloading the parts that have changed, which is basically feedback on how the form submission went. So this has a really nice user experience inside of single page applications. Traditionally with MPAs, it's the full page refresh, but you don't have to do that. And that's where this gets really interesting, the idea of SPA versus MPA, most of those things aren't as distinct as you might think. And I think Astro is the perfect example of this. Astro is a modern framework that is structured as an MPA, but ships zero JavaScript by default so that your websites are as performant as possible. So inside of Astro, it doesn't ship JavaScript by default, but if you need some sort of front end interactivity or front end state, you can actually incorporate into Astro 
UI frameworks. Let's search for, let's go to the docs in here and do a command K and let's say UI frameworks. You can actually use React, Vue, Solid, it's felt other frameworks inside of Astro to be able to use the stuff that you're already used to from a single page application, bring that into Astro, but it still kind of maintains this MPA methodology. So if we look at MPAs versus SPAs on here, it kind of breaks down some more of this technology and compare and contrast them. So in Astro by default, each page is going to be a full page refresh, but you can create API endpoints inside of Astro. If we look at server endpoints in here, server endpoints, you can create API routes and you can use something like React on the front end. And you can still have that same interaction of loading the page initially, but then on form submissions, handle that in JavaScript to send it over to the server, do whatever you need to do with your database and then respond back. Typically Astro is thought of as like a static site generator and very limited to that, but it's actually quite capable because you can add these server endpoints. You can do client side JavaScript in the front end using your favorite framework of choice. So it's a really, re really, really neat combination of all of these methodologies. Now, one thing that I wanna call out is I am currently working on releasing a course on Astro, which will teach you all about multi-page applications, integrating with frameworks like React and Svelte, et cetera, creating API server endpoints with Astro. And this is at the domain astrocourse.dev. So you can check this out and sign up for the free updates and a discount code for when this course actually gets launched. So this is at astrocourse.dev. So let's talk about which one of these is going to be better for you, MPA versus SPA. SPAs are traditionally going to be better for really, really interactive JavaScript heavy applications. Something like a dashboard where you have lots of different things going on in the dashboard that need data, that need to be able to handle transactions. Something like Spotify that has a bunch of different transactions. Something like Twitter that is constantly sending tweets, liking tweets, deleting tweets now that you can, et cetera. Those sort of things are gonna do really well because you have so much data, you don't wanna reload that data every time. You wanna keep the data that you have in the browser and then use your API endpoints to make requests back and forth. So when would you use an MPA? Well, one thing that is very important is SEO value. So making sure that your, uh, your website is SEO friendly so that it can be indexed and pulled up. If you don't have all of the constant loading of a ton of data like you might have in a single page application, this might make more sense as well because loading a page from scratch may not be as wasteful as it would be if you had a ton of data with something like Twitter or a lot of transactions like Spotify. You just can't handle doing full page reset refreshes in each of those cases, but in something that doesn't have as much going on, it's going to make perfect sense. And there's another big thing that comes to mind and that's with authentication and gating your content behind and making sure the, a user is logged in or has a specific role or permission or something to view a page. With a multi-page application, you can do that authentication verification on the server before responding back with a page or redirecting a user to the login page if they're not supposed to be there. I love this architecture because it's very clean of you can't get to the page if you're not logged in. With a single page application, you have to handle all of that logic in front end JavaScript. And that also means from a user perspective, that means a lot of loading states again, while you're verifying on each page, is the user still logged in before showing them that content? versus doing that on the server means all that stuff is handled. And so by the time they actually navigate to a page, if they get to that page, they're allowed to be there because that decision was made on the server. So I think this is a cleaner separation of concern, specifically when it comes with verification and authentication on gated content in your app. And then you can think about, maybe you don't have to choose between the two exclusively. Something like Astro is a great way to have a multi-page application methodology you can still do interactive JavaScript using these components in whatever framework you like the most, React, Svelte, Vue, et cetera, which is really, 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 really neat. So Astro, I think, is a great combination of all of this, not to mention amazing other frameworks that give you control over these situations as well. So I'm a big fan of Next.js and the React ecosystem. There's SvelteKit and the Svelte ecosystem. There's Nuxt and the Vue ecosystem. All these frameworks have modern tools and methodologies to be able to get the most performance wise and SEO wise out of all the things that you built if you really kind of learn the in and outs. But I think starting with the difference between single page applications and multi-page applications, understanding the trade-offs can help you then make more effective decisions going forward. 
So what do you think? What do you prefer between multi-page applications and single page applications? Which one of those resonates most for you? And if you have any specific examples of when you would choose one or another, leave those in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.